Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we are talking about TikTok because this was what a societal-wide TikTok ban might look like. Now, this is coming from CBS News, and we are talking about the state of Montana. If you didn't know, I think they're the fourth largest state in terms of land, but they have one of the smallest populations in the United States of under 1 million compared to the most populous state, over 50 million in California. But this is a good snapshot of what this might look like society-wide. And the reason why we're talking about Montana is because they are the first state this past Friday yesterday to pass legislation banning TikTok on all personal devices, not just government, but personal, sending that legislation to their governor, Greg Gianforte, prohibiting TikTok from operating within state lines and barring app stores from offering TikTok for downloads. Now, the lawmakers in Montana's House voted 54 to 43 to give final approval to this bill known as SB 419. And should the governor sign the bill, it would take effect in January of 2024. But the legislation is obviously expected to face significant legal challenges. And we're going to go through that as well. But first, this is what essentially a ban would look like. The legislation specifically names TikTok as the target of the bill. No other, no other apps, Chinese or otherwise, are mentioned. Just TikTok. And it outlines potential penalties of a up to $10,000 per violation per day. These penalties would apply to any app store found to have violated the law. So if Apple's, uh, you know, app store decides to keep this going and let's say on, you know, day one, 20,000 Montanans decide to download and install TikTok because Apple never removed it, that's 10,000 times 20,000 in a fine that they're going to get. And if it keeps on rolling, it's going to keep happening per day. If zero people download it for a day, Apple or Google, in that case, if they keep it up, is still getting at least 10000 a day. Individual users of TikTok, though, according to this legislation, would not be penalized for accessing TikTok. The legislation also references the presence of TikTok as dangerous content and has dangerous challenges. That's quote unquote. And so as you were looking at this, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of this. And I've got a lot of thoughts and questions and all of this from a security and privacy standpoint. But the legal challenge for this are obvious. And here it is in a nutshell, because according to TikTok spokesperson, Brooke Oberwetter responding obviously to this legislation on Friday, and I quote, the bill's champions have admitted that they have no feasible plan for operationalizing this attempt to censor American voices and that bill's constitutionality will be decided by the courts. We will continue to fight for TikTok users and creators in Montana whose livelihood and First Amendment rights are threatened by this egregious government overreach. And interestingly enough, and if you are a follower of mine for any amount of time, you know I'm no fan, no fan of TikTok whatsoever, but operation I can't even speak. Operationalizing this, uh, to Brooke's point, is actually a really good question. Because how are you going to know what's on state lines? And that is something that we have to understand. Meaning, are you now, as a state, going to require, let's say, me, a Montanan, if I was a Montanan, to have my GPS on in my phone 24 hours a day? And so suddenly, you know, I leave Montana and go to a neighboring state, like let's say one of the Dakotas, uh, you know, or Wyoming or something like that. And suddenly TikTok is now working on in the app store because my geographical location has changed. You know, I'm in Illinois. What happens if I have TikTok on my phone? I don't and never will. But if I did, and let's say I went ahead and flew to, you know, Helena, Montana or Great Falls or any one of the other really cool cities they've got up there, is my TikTok going to stop working now? Uh, you know, it, because they have basically baked in to TikTok, the GPS coordinates that are the perimeter of that state? Do they have to do that by law? I mean, th this is th these are challenges operationally that have to happen, not to mention the First Amendment issues and all of that. Again, I am no fan of TikTok or other social media platforms, which should tell you a lot. Now, on top of this, NetChoice, which is a technology industry group, I've mentioned them before, TikTok is a member. They said that this bill violates the U.S. Constitution's uh, constitutional pro prohibition against so-called bills of attainder. That's legislation that seeks to punish a person without trial. Quote, this move for Montana legislature sets a dangerous precedent that the government can try to ban any business it doesn't like without clear evidence of wrongdoing. The U.S. Constitution clearly forbids lawmakers from passing laws to criminalize specific or individual businesses. Governor Gianforte should veto this clearly unconstitutional law. Now, they've got a good point here. 
in the sense that, yes, the last thing you want is a slippery slope or broad language in any bill that would allow, let's say, the Montana government to carve out something to say, oh, well, we don't like you for different reasons than TikTok, and now you're falling under the umbrella of this law. If they're doing it specifically and only for TikTok, that is slightly different. But there has to be a clear reason to ban it. Now, I believe that reason is there. I've done many videos, podcasts, and also talked about this on my radio show of just what we know about how dangerous TikTok is to national security. And so I I urge you to go back and look at that. I'm not going to spend all that time adjudicating that. I have done a ton of that. Go to my YouTube channel, search my videos for the word TikTok, and believe me, you'll find like a million of them. So with that, we have other groups speaking up too, because Design It For Us, which is a coalition of youth activists pushing for changes to platform regulation, lamented that the perspectives of internet natives were not reflected in this bill, meaning, hey, old people, what are you doing? And I quote, we believe that social media can be good for young people if they are designed for us. Bands like this, uh, one, forego a real opportunity to proactively address kids' safety and privacy concerns on this platform. Now, that's from Zaman Qureshi and Emma Lembeck. Those are the group's co-chairs. Now, a group representing app developers, like I said, everybody's talking about this, uh, at least in the uh, in the development world, as well as cybersecurity, that, that basically this bill could encourage governments to legislate on an app-by-app basis, creating a patchwork of laws that would, quote, weigh heavily on small app companies, end quote. This is something I've talked about when it came to California's CCPA. This is the privacy, uh, pl- uh, you know, basically the privacy conditions that California has for their citizens' data. Illinois has BPA, New York has Shield, and we have been creating a patchwork of some states having GDPR style protections, other states being wide open. We need national standards for these things because we are so interconnected, uh, you know, due to the internet. You know, it's not me sending you something in the mail from, you know, here in Chicago down to LA and back. I can instantly connect to anybody or even a VPN in, in, in Los Angeles or San Francisco or anywhere else in the state. And so that's what we're talking about. And to continue with that group, while it might begin with TikTok, it clearly won't end there. And that is According to Morgan Reed of the App Association, they received more than half of their funding from Apple. Now, another civil society group filed, or I'm sorry, have alleged that SB 419 violates Montanans' First Amendment rights to free expression of information. This past week, a joint letter to state lawmakers by the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, you should all be familiar with them, argued that there is a high constitutional bar for government restrictions on speech. Quote, SB 419 is censorship. It would unjustly cut Montanans off from a platform where they speak out and exchange ideas every day. And it would set an alarming precedent for excessive government control over how Montanans use the Internet. That's according to uh, uh, basically the letter from the ACLU. Now, this is an interesting one because what a lot of people don't understand is that the First Amendment basically protects you and your speech from the government quashing that speech. And so in that vein, if let's say I choose as an American citizen to use TikTok as a platform to express myself and the government comes in and says you cannot use that, you know, for free expression, they actually have a case there. Now that said, TikTok being quote unquote free because you're the product, but you can go use it for free doesn't cost you a cent other than all of the data ever ever in your life, um, you can go ahead and use that. But you can also use Facebook or Twitter or, you know, whatever will replace Twitter at some point. You know, there's a lot of different options that you have out there. And and so to say that TikTok has more sway than another would be incorrect. It's not fully quashing your rights. But at the same token, if we have that other language I talked about previously where it's a slippery slope, maybe they come after Facebook next. Maybe they come after Twitter. Maybe they come after whatever replaces Twitter. Who knows? And those are the things that we are talking about here. And so this is going to be very interesting. Now, this plan has not deterred TikTok's critics. More than half of U.S. states as of right now have clamped down on TikTok in some fashion. And so Friday's House vote in Montana underscored usually or underscored, not usually, but underscores the breadth and depth of support for limiting TikTok, even on non-government devices. Now, I've written articles on TikTok. I've done videos on this. I mean, I do think that we need some kind of TikTok ban, especially at the government side of it. We need education on these kinds of things. But the law and the wording in the laws cannot be vague. They have to be carved out specifically 
for TikTok. So you cannot pivot and say this language also applies to Facebook, which I'm not a fan of either, or Twitter, which I'm not a fan of either, or anything else. And so I think this is an important one. I think we're going to see where this hap what happens with this. But Montana is now setting a precedent, assuming it's signed into law, that other states may sign on to, you know, and, and there you go. And obviously we have also differences, I'm not getting political, between states that are run by Republicans versus Democrats. There's a lot of things that go into this. But at the end of the day, coming from a cybersecurity standpoint, the more we limit TikTok, the better. The more we educate people on their privacy and the data mining and the threat that this poses, I think that's really important especially when it comes to young people, because Lord knows I was young and did not understand the consequences. And now that I am old, I get it a little better. And I think we all need to understand that, especially as we're growing up. Good luck, though. Good luck explaining that to the youngins. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP, but not TikTok. If you see me on TikTok, it's an imposter. YouTube, though, I'm on, and you should subscribe to me there. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everybody.